Personal protective equipment should be selected based upon proximity to the patient and the likelihood of contact with any blood or body fluids during procedures in the patient care area. This video will demonstrate the proper sequence for donning and doffing personal protective equipment from the Centers for Disease Control. The first step in donning personal protective equipment is good hand hygiene. The second step of the procedure is donning the gown. The gown should be fastened at the back of the neck and the waist by tying a bow. The third step is the selection of respiratory protection. One option might be a procedure mask. Procedure masks are used for droplet precautions. Droplet precautions are used in the care of patients with influenza. To apply this mask, gently crease the metal insert to create an indentation for your nose. Then cuff the elastic bands around your ears and spread the mask to cover your face from the bridge of your nose to below the chin. Finally, ensure the mask is snug and comfortable on your face. Procedure masks also come with attached eye protection. This mask is applied in a similar fashion. Respirators act as a filter to prevent small particles from entering the airway of the person wearing them. A respirator should be fit tested annually in order to ensure a good seal. The properly sized respirator should always be used. Place the respirator on your face and position the straps at the back of the head and at the base of the neck. The elastic straps should be in contact with the skin on your neck, so remove any hair that is in the way. Press the mask along the edges to seal it to your skin. Finally, breathe deeply in and out, feeling for any areas where air may be escaping along the edges. Respirators can be shaped to fit the face or be folded. Folded respirators are applied in a similar fashion, ensuring that the respirator is fully unfolded and has a tight seal with the skin. Again, breathe deeply in and out, feeling for any areas where air may be escaping along the edges. Facial hair will prevent the respirator from making a tight seal with the skin. Even a small amount of stubble will compromise the seal and reduce the protection provided by a respirator. If the respiratory protection you selected does not have attached eye protection, eyewear should be selected next. Protective eyewear might be safety glasses or goggles. Many shapes and styles are available. The final step in the procedure is the application of gloves. Ensure that the cuff of each glove covers the wrist of the isolation gown. A secure fit will prevent gapping while providing care to the patient. Before entering the room, ensure all personal protective equipment is in place and comfortable. This will prevent you from adjusting your personal protective equipment while in the patient care area and potentially contaminating unprotected areas of your body. You are now ready to provide care to your patient. The first step in the procedure to remove personal protective equipment is doffing the gloves. Gloves are removed first because they are likely the dirtiest item and are contaminated on the external surfaces. Grasp the first glove on the external surface at the cuff and gently peel off. 
hold the removed glove in the gloved hand. Then slide a finger of the ungloved hand under the remaining glove, touching its clean side only, and gently peel the second glove off over the first glove. Discard the gloves in the trash. All movements in doffing should be slow and intentional to prevent the aerosolizing of any contaminant on the used equipment. The second step in this procedure is to remove your eye protection. The glasses or goggles are contaminated on the outside, so touch only the earpieces or elastic bands while removing them. Eye protection should be placed in the trash or be placed in a designated area for reprocessing. The third item to be removed is the gown. The most contaminated areas of the gown are the front and sleeves. Unfasten the ties at the neck and waist, then remove the gown by slowly pulling it down and rolling it away from the body with the clean side out to form a bundle. Use the foot pedal to lift the lid on a linen hamper. Then place the entire gown inside the bag. Disposable gowns may be discarded in the trash. Be sure that the entire gown is inside the trash can. Gowns left hanging are a risk for contamination. The fourth step is the removal of respiratory protection. It is removed last to prevent any transmission of contaminated particles to your respiratory tract while removing the other equipment. Touching the front of the mask or respirator should be minimized during removal. When a mask or respirator has two elastic bands, remove the bottom one first. Discard the mask in the trash. Finally, perform good hand hygiene immediately after removing all of your personal protective equipment.